Hello friends, On One Photo Raw 2026 has just been released, and as I mentioned in my initial review, one of its major new capabilities is Mask Layers, a feature that lets you stack and combine multiple masks non-destructively, making it much easier and more intuitive to handle complex masking tasks. So in this video, I'll walk you through how to use it so you can get the most out of On One Photo Raw 2026. To demonstrate, let's work on this portrait. Let's start off by editing the complex hair. In previous versions of On One, this would be extremely tedious and error prone, but not anymore thanks to On One's new subject selection, which is its most advanced tool capable of handling complex hair. I'll navigate to the local panel and add an adjustment. For those who've used On One before, note that the workflow for adding adjustments has been simplified. You no longer need to tap and add button. Instead, you can click directly on any of the masking tools. I'll click Select Subject. And as you can see, just like that, an adjustment layer is created. You can see from the thumbnail that a preview of the mask has been generated. To view the full-sized mask, click the eye icon. As you can see, it is a very accurate mask, capturing the fine details and even the small gaps in the hair. Now since we only want to target the hair, we need to remove the other parts of the body from the mask. To refine a mask, navigate to the masking panel, which was previously called the properties panel. In the masking panel, you can see two layers, the target mask and the mask layer. The target mask represents the final result after all the mask layers are combined. This is the one you actually see when you click the eye icon. Each time you use a masking tool, a new mask layer is created. Since we currently have only one mask layer, both the target mask and the mask layer have identical masks, which you can see from the thumbnail. I'll use Quick Mask AI to remove from the mask. I'll click More, Quick Mask, Subtract. I'll make the selections. I'll click Apply. And with that, you can see a new mask layer is added to the top. Looking at the target mask's thumbnail, you can see that it's been updated. It now shows the result of subtracting the top quick mask layer from the original subject mask layer. Viewing the mask by clicking the eye icon confirms that the quick mask has indeed been subtracted from the subject mask leaving us with a clean and accurate hair mask, which is exactly what we want. And you can continue refining it with other masking tools. I'll use the brush to remove a few small misselections. I'll click More, Brush, Subtract. And there you go, the mask is done. Let's make our adjustments. I'll increase the exposure and enhance the texture via a structure adjustment. And as you can see, all our adjustments precisely target just the hair, no halos or artifacts in our edit. Bravo! Next, let's demonstrate masking the skin. I'll once again create a new adjustment in the local panel. I'll click More, Quick Mask, Add. By the way, for those who've used previous versions of On One, you can also use Super Select to create the adjustment. You'll notice that using Super Select generates the same type of mask layer, and On One even labels it Quick Mask, not Super Select. Personally, I think On One should retire Super Select to avoid confusion and keep the interface more consistent. As you can see, we now have two adjustment layers. To avoid confusion, I'll rename the layers. I'll select the skin. Looking at the mask, it is fairly accurate, though it does incorrectly include the eyes and lips. Not a problem, we can remove those areas using Quick Mask as well. In the masking panel, I'll choose Quick Mask, Subtract. Then I'll select the eyes and lips. Applying the mask, once again, a new mask layer is created. 
adjusting the exposure, you can see the eyes and lips are no longer included in the adjustment. So that is how mask layers might be used in editing a portrait. Next, let's demonstrate how it might be used when editing a landscape. For this edit, I'll use a gradient mask to realistically brighten the underexposed foreground, creating a smooth transition that's brighter in front while gradually fading towards the background. I'll click More, Gradient, Add. Looking at the result, you can see that the gradient makes the edit look very natural. However, it is still incomplete since it only brightens part of the subject. No problem, I'll add the subject to the mask by going to More, Subject, Add. Looking at the mask, you can see it's extremely accurate, even capturing the tiny strands of hair blowing in the wind. Amazing! After increasing the exposure, the adjustment now looks correct, seamlessly incorporating both the near foreground and the subject. Next, let's mask the sky. While we could repeat the same process and mask each element individually, a faster way would be to copy the existing mask since the sky mask is just the inverse of the foreground. To copy the mask, I'll click the Target Masks Options button and choose Copy. Next. I'll create a new adjustment. I'll select one of the tools. I'll just choose brush, although I won't be actually using it since I'll be pasting the mask. There, the new adjustment layer has been created. Next, I'll paste the mask by clicking the Options button and choosing Paste. As you can see, that adds in the mask layers. I'll then click Options again and choose Invert. And there you go, the mask is flipped, perfectly isolating the sky, ready for our adjustments. Here is the before and the after. So that's how you use mask layers. As you can see, they make handling complex masking tasks far more intuitive and effortless compared to any previous version of On1, a true game changer. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think of mask layers down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're planning to get on one, be sure to use my link in the description and the code TBP20 at checkout for 20% off. Thanks for supporting the channel. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.